now than when you were on parade at Yorktown. I see the men we lost. I know, dear. <sighs> Aren't you pleased it still fits? Well, it could be let out a little in the frontier you're here, don't you think? <laughs> oh, no, it's not too bad for a man my age. For a man any age. The children were so excited to see their grandfather go off to war. It's not a war. It's a campaign. Years. I can't believe it. Twenty years ago, we were the rebels. When we reach this Carlisle rendezvous, I'm afraid I'll find only those who support my policies. Instead of an army that represents all of our people. What if the frontiersmen won't back down? It could mean civil war. Well, I'm leaving Mr. Randolph waiting. Be vigilant with young Wash, hmm? I know I still indulge him, but this time I promise to keep him at his books. And don't worry so much about Nellie. Thank you. She's just growing up. to your new army, Commander-in-Chief Washington. Thank you, Governor Mifflin. Or should I say General Mifflin, commander of the Pennsylvania militia. You'll find us honed to a fine edge, sir. Ready for battle. God willing, it won't be necessary. Will you review the troops, sir? Yes, sir. Amazing, sir. Men of all walks of life, high and low, even the most rabid Jeffersonians have rallied to support their president. We are a nation again, Mr. Hamilton.
Press on the ceasefire. No. Where's your commanding officer? What in God's name is this? A war between New Jersey and Pennsylvania? They fired first, sir. We had to defend ourselves. What were your orders, Colonel? We were to patrol the flank and make sure the rebels didn't surprise us, sir. The rebels? The rebels are a hundred miles away, damn it! General Washington, how are we to know they were not rebels? Look at these uniforms. Well, we don't have society bells to dress us up like toy soldiers, General Mifflin. Enough of this. We're here to awe the rebels, not fight with each other. Reform your men and then carry out your orders, Colonel. Yes, sir. Did you, sir, give this order to charge these shadows in the woods? Sir, they did not identify themselves. <laughs> I cannot fire a governor from command of his own militia. Damn it. Sir, fortunately for all of us, your, your young men on horseback are such poor marksmen. No one was hurt. Ah. If you had had your own flank riders, General, this never would have happened. Sir, I... No more excuses, General. Get your troops back on the march. This is a serious business, Colonel Hamilton. Of course, sir. I do for you, Mr. Reddig, Mr. Finley, Mr. President. Sir, we are the Western Pennsylvania Committee of Safety. Ah, we rode all night, sir, to get here before you broke camp. Call in on the colors! Yes. Quickly, Let's go on. Tell me. We want you to call off the march of your army to the frontier counties to prevent any further bloodshed. Sir, people of consequence favor submission. But some wilder elements not only oppose the excise tax, but all law and government. They never thought you'd send an army against them. Well, they should have known better. Sir, if an invading army raises resentment, the situation could explode all over again. I understand your concern, gentlemen. You would have me order this superbly trained, ready to fight army to remain in camp while your committee of safety tries to decide what it's going to do. Come now, gentlemen. This army is here to march and fight, not vegetate. Sir, if you would. Uh, what, sir? We. If you would. We want peace, too, but... Oh, but, sir, I want peace also. We shall have it when citizens respect the law. Mr. President. Gentlemen, only absolute submission will stop this march. Ride back to your committee of safety and tell all resistors to lay down their arms now and show respect for an army whose only motive is to consolidate and preserve the blessings of that revolution which made us a free and independent nation. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Governor Lee. Yes, sir. You'll take command of the combined forces. Colonel Hamilton, you'll stay behind to convey my orders. But, sir. And carry out my policy of conciliation. Mr. Dandridge, follow with the baggage. But, sir, you're not leaving your command. Uh, yes, I am. Lieutenant, form up the dragoons. But how can the army do without its commanding general? If there's no war, you don't need me. Then where could she be, George? Oh, I'm sure she just met a friend in the market and they went down to look at the ships. Hmm? I have the most awful feeling something's happened. Excuse me. Christopher, Mrs. Washington is worried about Oni. She's been missing for several hours. Do you know where she might be? No, sir. But she's been acting rather strange lately. Strange? Whispering all the time. With Molly. Ah. Would you bring Molly to us, please? Yes, sir. I'm sure she's all right. 
She hasn't been herself. She used to come to me with all her little concerns and questions. For days now, she's kept to herself. Has it affected her work? She's too conscientious for that. But all I get is yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I'm afraid for it, George. She didn't want to come right away, sir. Molly, do you know where Oni is? No, sir. I think you do. No, sir. Molly, you must tell us the truth. No, she may be in trouble. Need help? No. No. Please, Molly. She ran away with Gerald, the Frenchman. I wandered Mount Vernon because he, he tried with me first. He, he going to do her wrong, I know. Oh, George. Molly, do you know where they went? They long gone now, sir. Where? New England. Freedom. Freedom? He doesn't care about her freedom. He wants her. She'll be ruined and he'll abandon her. Christopher, will you take Molly back inside, please? Yes, sir. I didn't want her to go, ma'am. I swear I didn't. I know. It's all right, Molly. Why? Why would she want to flee a situation where she's treated so well? Where she's loved. I never thought of it that way. I don't know what I feel. Except hurt. That she didn't come to me. I know how much it means to you. She's so young, George. What will happen to her? Well, I'll notify the customs collectors throughout New England. She may choose not to come home. She may want to be free. Custis is almost as lovely as you are. Thank you, sir. Forgive me for interrupting such a beautiful song sung by such a lovely young lady, but I had to see you. I'm very sorry about Mrs. Hamilton's loss, baby. It was a loss, yes. My, my whole life seems to have been a loss. I've sacrificed everything in my life to create a strong government. But now the Jeffersonians control the house, and uh, all my victories have turned to ashes. I I've given too much for too little to a country that has shown me no gratitude. Mr. Hamilton, no, 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 I... Certainly, I don't refer to you, Mr. President, the one man I'll always place first in my regard. That's why it's so difficult to have to tell you, sir, that I've decided to leave government service forever. Perhaps we should talk about this when Mrs. Hamilton is feeling better. I can't go on. As Treasury Secretary, I've been accused of everything from financial chicanery to moral depravity. Yet I've so little lined my own nest that I'll have to borrow to set up a law practice in New York. You are very important to me, Alex. Your grand design for America's future. That too is ashes. Surely you realize what a failure I am as a public man. No, I do not agree. I am. I admit it. I hungered for fame, and what did I get? Scorn. I lack the politician's skill at compromise. Truth is truth. 
and cannot be halved. I mean, why am I so disturbed by plots and slanders calmly viewed by everybody else? Am I a fool? A romantic? A Don Quixote? My own worst enemy. Look out there. Look. You ride down any street and you will see Americans at work, doing things, earning their bread, building a life and a nation. And you, Mr. Hamilton, more than any of my ministers, are responsible for that. I want to believe. I can't. I must leave. Sir, I'll always be at your service in any way but public. Our friendship is my most treasure possession. No, this country needs John Jay for its emissary. Very well, sir. If you feel that strongly, I will serve as your envoy extraordinary. Good. Good. I am deeply grateful, Mr. Chief Justice. Uh, even our embargo has not stopped the British from bullying our ships. Only your mission can prevent war. Mr. President, the conflict with Great Britain threatens our very existence. My mission has been made far more difficult by those French sympathizers who would have us bait England. I'll twist the lion's tail hard enough to make him wince, but not so hard as to make him pounce. Huh? <laughs> I find nothing those Jeffersonian scoundrels propose worthy of humor. If you, sir, would only sit on them for a few months, the prospects for peace would be greatly enhanced. Mr. Jay, I want you to understand that you are the president's envoy and thus must represent all of the people, even the Jeffersonians. You will agree to nothing that will violate our existing treaties with France. We're waiting for a ship in Constable, which way to the president's house? Turn north, three squares, then right. Close your eyes, Mr. President. Hmm. Close your eyes. Can I open them now? If you dare. This vision is so magnificent. I'm not sure my old eyes can stand it. Be serious, Grandpapa. Hmm. Do you like it? Hmm. It's magnificent. That's the only word you know, magnificent. It's what she'll wear to be bridesmaid at Elizabeth's wedding in Virginia. Well, every man there, young or old, is certainly going to fall in love with you. I hereby declare myself immune to all masculine charms. Except my dashing grandpapas. I'm afraid, my dear Nelly, that the passions of your sex are more easier raised than calmed. Don't boast too soon of your resistance to its power. I wasn't boasting. The female has a good deal of inflammable matter, however dormant. And when you put that torch to it, you may burst into flame. Burst into flame? I think I'd like that if it ever happened. <laughs> George, but I love it. <laughs> now, Grandpa, do go on. You make more sense than all the silly school matches I've ever heard. Love. Love. Love is said to be an involuntary passion and cannot be easily controlled. So, when the... Um, uh, 
continue. Uh, when the fire begins to kindle. And your heart grows warm. You must ask these questions to it. Who is this invader? What are his qualities? For a sensible woman like yourself can never be happy with a fool. And I've never been a young fool. A rider from Norfolk just brought this dispatch from Mr. J. Norfolk? Yes, thank you. Uh, offer him a hot drink before he goes. Thank yes. you. My dear Nellie, I wish for you a good husband when you want one. And deserve one. Mr. J. Now we shall see whether he has sent us a gift from Providence or a Pandora's box. How could Jay agree to let British fur traders cross our boundaries? Hmm? And the severe restriction on our, our West Indian trade while securing nothing, absolutely nothing, to stop the impressment of American seamen. He knows how, how emotional that issue is. Any accommodation with England will only enrage the Jeffersonians, and yet a failure to ratify will only infuriate the Federalists. What shall we do? As Secretary of State, I believe I have done all I can to try and placate both sides. You have? Yes, sir. Well, then we must stay calm. The Congress convenes June... June 8th. June 8th. Yes. We must keep this treaty a secret until we can deliver it to the Senate for their consideration. That at least would give us time to prepare. We'll trust in the Senate's advice and consent. They've been quick to criticize the executive. Now let them be as wise as they are loud. Pickering and Walcott. Reread Article 12 while I speak. Good evening, gentlemen. In the office, please. I have further thoughts on how to deal with all of this. What's all this secret stuff? Why have you excluded Mr. Randolph from this meeting? Because, Mr. President, that man is a traitor. What? You'll know what we mean after you look at this. Now, just tell me. A French diplomatic pouch retrieved after it had been thrown overboard when a British frigate overhauled a French ship mid-ocean. The British ambassador placed it in our hands. This is the original and a translation. So as not to alert Randolph, I suggest you look at the contents tonight. You will find irrefutable evidence that your Secretary of State has been paid by the French Minister Fauché to supply information on our secret policy deliberations. Oh my God. Randolph may be the mastermind of the violent protests against the treaty and head of the conspiracy to destroy your popularity. Traitor! may be too mild a word. Mr. Randolph, you'll excuse me, but it's late and I'm tired for a long trip. We can resume tomorrow. A brief meeting with Mr. Wilcott and Pickering. Yes, I asked them to leave also. 
I reread Article 12. Tomorrow, right. please. I can't take any more of it. Sir, you are not well. I'll be all right. Thank you. Thank you, my dear friend. Good night, sir. Good night. spy service gentlemen to investigate Mr. Randolph. So a confrontation is the only course. I will present to him the incriminating original documents since he's fluent in French. How he reacts should reveal whether he is indeed guilty or innocent. <laughs> Secretary of State is here. Yes. Let him in, please. Please, come in, sir. Morning, Mr. President. Mr. Pickering. Mr. Walcott. Sir. Mr. Randolph, I'd like you to read these documents. As it will take you some time, you sit over there. When you're finished, you may make such Explanations, as you choose. Say, this is a total surprise. And I am not prepared, as others in this room appear to be, for this interview. However, according to the numbered documents, two essential ones are missing. And on the spur of the moment, I cannot recall the exact circumstance of every meeting with Mr. Fauchet. I can understand that. But two things I am perfectly clear about, Mr. President. I have never made an improper communication with the French minister, and I have neither received any money from the man nor made any overture for that purpose. If I may be permitted to keep the packet a short time, I can promise a completely satisfactory explanation to everything in it which has reference to me. plot that Fauché mentions. Can you tell us, sir, what he referred to? Gentlemen, there are many matters that a Secretary of State discusses with ministers of other countries, not all of which stay in one's memory. I will certainly consult my notes, but... Wait, I do remember telling you, Mr. President, of one Ominous meeting in New York between Hammond and extreme Federalists. Perhaps you would supplement my recollection. I... I don't remember any such discussion. 